I'm, I'm just going to touch on this concept really quickly just because it's important, but in the interest of time, I do want to make sure that we get to some of the pieces around uh, uh, the access options and some of the managed piece. Um, new in version 10 uh, is something we're referring to one pass. So this is the idea of converging backup, archive, and reporting processes into a single operation. Um, so you know, we talk, uh, earlier on we talked about what Commvault's backup company or archive company, these things. What we're seeing is why waste time running a scan, you know, move whatever change blocks or whatever data you have to do to the back end, and then update the catalogs, update the tables for each one of those things. That's three times the amount of effort, three times you have to touch the front end environment. Just touch it one time and capture all the data that is required. If we capture the, the archive policies, uh, marry them to the backup policies. Once uh, you know, we set a particular data set or, or job that says, OK, a retention requirement of a certain number of uh, days or months suddenly gets uh, stubbed out automatically to a, to a long-term archive. So all built into this, this concept of one pass. Um, so with that, I want to just kind of turn it over to my partner uh, in crime, Greg White, um, director of product marketing on our uh, access uh, and sort of edge data protection type solutions. So take it away, Greg. Cool. Thanks, everybody. So um, this will give us a chance now to kind of talk about making some of this stuff real. And this is something that I, I'm really passionate about. And I think um, it, it's really interesting when I, we go and talk to customers that are thinking that, and they're trying to kind of wrap their head around this content store idea. We um, have talked about it a lot here. But how do you really make it real when you talk about how you can get to that data? And every one of us is trying to you know, be as productive as we can and get access in and out of uh, all this information we have across different devices in different places. And, and what we've done with Content Store and all that is, is what I'm going to show you right now. And what I'm going to do is just kind of start out and talk about um, all of the things that we've done in 10 that have opened up the different places that you can go to get into that content store. So if you think about um, end users and its, and its um, admin teams as end users, it's end users that are just trying to get in and get to personal data they have on their PC. Um, but they want to have different, everybody kind of has a different way that they want to get to their information. They may want to go natively through a console. They want to maybe natively go through an app. Or they may want to just kind of go across, you know, launch something within uh, their PC or even, you know, in vSphere. Do I want to have to know how to work the Simpana console to, to do a backup? Maybe I just, as a VM admin, want to go and be able to restore something right out of that, out of my uh, console that I'm natively involved in. And Phil was just talking about um, the one pass piece when it comes to file system and email. Uh, one of the, the big things in version 10 is this ability to have a plug into Outlook so that you can natively get to archived email. You run this, the one pass process, scans it, does the backup, does the archive, does the reporting, but then uh, is available natively through the application for that end user. So I can go in and see all my archived email natively through Outlook. I don't have to go into another interface. I don't have to go to the help desk and ask them to restore something. So this concept of there are a lot of different ways to get to this information. And, and when I talk to, to different people out there, it, it really hits in different areas. And it's really cool um, for the admin teams, because they don't want to deal with helping do these restores for end users all the time. It helps with um, also having that, the admin teams be able to go in and talk to their business and say, how can I do things to help? Uh, you be more effective in your business. And, and that's this whole idea of how do I have self-service access to all this information. That's what I'm going to demo for you. And while I'm kind of talking through, uh, through that, I also wanted to kind of highlight, you know, that um, the, the cool thing about this, too, is uh, for, the, for the admin side is it, it kind of makes backup sexy again, right? This allows them to go in and say, look at this, all this cool stuff that I can deliver you. And not only that, it's lightening my load by having this self-service access. So what I'm going to do is show you, um, I just have to connect here, give you an idea of what is an example of how could I get into, you know, how can I use this data in a personal way? The only so, word I'd argue with is uh, making it sexy again. Making it sexy again. It was never sexy to begin with. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> At least from an end user perspective. 
So let me. I wasn't gonna go there. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the sexy back up. Restoring sexy. Just think, like, we maybe all shadow copies, maybe. We all used this before it was sexy. What was it? We got it on the ground floor. I don't <laughs> so what I've got here um, is the mobile app, and and I should say when we talk about um, opening up this data in different ways, uh, they're different pieces. So. We have the ability to enable the, the admin to be able to have a mobile portal into the Simpana uh, environment to understand what's going on. But what I'm going to kind of talk about is from the end user perspective, and I can give you a couple examples as well. But, um, and it's not just about desktop, laptop, backup. <laughs> 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 that is fantastic. <laughs> we have a backup though, we're good. Yeah, I'm shameless. I've got to be now. Have you had one of each yet? That is the question. Have <laughs> you? <laughs> That's a great photo. I like the crossing himself part. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this Commvault Edge app. It's going to show me all the PCs that I have ownership to. I'm going to also kind of run through the web portal real quick so you get a sense for that as well. A lot of the same functionality. But it's not just desktop, laptop data. We can also have um, your protected exchange data that you can get through through the app. And um, you can imagine how we could kind of continue to add different types of data that would be available as a self-service anywhere access for the for the customer or for that for that end user. And so I can go and look at what happened with this laptop recently. Uh, it looks like it backed up when I was at the Houston airport uh, earlier today. Gives you um, information on how much time that is, what's your total backup size, what is your schedule. And you can see the benefits of source ID dupe. I actually was doing a lot of stuff on the plane. Uh, but when I look, you know, it was a lot of copying this deck, and it's already got three or four copies in there, right? Very small backup size because of that source ID dupe. So you can even do it over this wireless card while you're sitting in the, in the airport. But kind of gives you that information on what's going on. You could go in and search and look for a particular file, like say, uh, you know, I'm just going to try and pick something here. I, I don't want to go browse to that all the way, so why don't I just start and say, okay, I'm looking for this file um, that has to do with Ricky. And the cool thing is, okay, so it's going to go through and do the search. And not only am I going to be able to get that file to show up, I can get this preview. And that's all part of some of the things we've done with the new search engine that we've added in version 10. I'll, I'll give a little highlight of that as well. But as you have the ability to just even preview this file, and I'll show you another one in a minute as well, where you can even just scan through the document. You could copy from that document, paste it into an email, and you never actually even downloaded anything. So my connection is a little slow, apparently, while this is running. I'll come back to it. Probably the at and <laughs> So I could go into, and here at the bottom, so I've got, I can see what devices I've got. I have multiple devices. I can favorite folders, so I could go right to a particular folder. So say I want to go and look um, within here or something. You know, and I'm, I know this is a big folder that I wanted to go to. Or I could go to my documents. I could go in here. <laughs> Um, and this is a good example of, of kind of how this works. I was on the road, in the car, going to the airport on the phone with uh, one of a, somebody on one of our sales teams. He really needed some information on IntelliSnap. He really wanted this uh, FAQ. He was going to talk to a customer. I get to the airport. I'm running late. Go right up to the gate. I don't have time to boot my laptop. It's in my backpack. I have a wireless card. I could do that. It's going to take a little time, but I could just go in here, you know, and pick that file that, that he was looking for. We'll just say it was um, this one. And then from here, I can immediately go and just email it to him. And this is what I did on, uh, on this actual uh, use of this app and how it really helps, how it really makes that content store real. And so... 
I will go back. Here's an example of the preview. So I could go in here, you know, look at what I was trying to find out, and I've got that actual preview. Once I've downloaded something, I can go to it right from the download. So I could go in here, here's this PDF, if I wanted to, and I've done this, I've been at an event, pulled this up, showed it to somebody on the floor, and I don't even have to carry my laptop with me anymore when I go to events, when I go talk to customers. So really making this kind of real about how I can better get to this stuff, how it's going to make my life better. And if I'm in the IT side, I can take this to the business and really be a hero, really bring sexy back. And then also, if I'm you know, thinking I'm a CEO and how am I going to enable my teams to work better, this is the kind of thing that the content store enables. And it's taking that backup <laughs> copy opening it up, you don't have to touch that production side, you don't have to put that at risk, you've got a protected copy, and now I've opened it up to lots of different ways to get to it. Let's see. So that is um, the mobile app side of things. What I wanted to do was, was also show the um, web console. So, and, and the interesting thing about talking about on the web console perspective is Going beyond, it's not just about um, it's not just about the laptop backup. So, oh, uh, that's not what. Was, there we go. So let's see if so. When I go into the web console, I can get to this from any laptop, any desktop. I could be in the hotel, you know, the free internet PC, and go to the console and be able to get to my information straight from that kind of environment. Let's see if it timed out or not. Nope. And so here, when I go in, I can see sort of the same thing, the systems I own. I can go in and actually um, then double click into that system. I get a much richer uh, understanding of what's going on on the backup side. I can look into what were the recent jobs that I've done. Am I blocking anything? And then I can also go in and select files to restore here as well. I get the same capabilities when it comes to this preview, same ability to leverage that information, a different way to consume it. I want to consume it through Outlook. I want to consume it through uh, a web-based console, which I can just launch from my laptop, which I can go to directly. I want to consume it from the mobile app. And that gives me a lot of different ways to really bring the value of that content store out and, and provide it to the business. Just a question about the, the mobile app. Yeah. I think that's that's kind of cool for a bunch of use cases. Can you disable the tweet button? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question. Can you disable the tweet button? So like, when I pulled it up, like when you pull it up, it'll give different options. Do I want to send it through email? Do I want to send it through tweet or Dropbox? Or, yeah, isn't that a, isn't that a setting on the app itself? I think it really does. I think it may be. Check out our quarterly, quarterly financials. Tweet. <laughs> 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 Hashtag no. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. Like, useful function. Like you've got uh, you know, marketing on social media who have to share a certain PDF every so often. Uh, but we ran into this in one of the products this morning where it had a tweet how much this product has saved you or whatever. And I'm thinking there's very few companies I've ever worked for who would want me tweeting what products I was using and, uh, you know, sensitive details like that. And this could be an issue. Yeah, that needs to be, this needs to be permissions. Maybe. So, yeah, 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 exactly. So, so a couple of things on this one here, too. Uh, the app itself is permissions-based, first of all. So you can basically go back and then uh, make this available only for a select set of users. Make the whole app. So the, data, the access on the app, the access to the data. The app can be downloaded in the App Store, but you can actually turn off so that you don't actually use it in the app. You only use it through the web console, right? You can also turn off things like over here. In this case, he, has pretty, he can pretty much do anything over here. Schedule his own stuff, um, you know, run his, update his schedule, add his own content, and so on and so forth. You can turn those off. So from an admin perspective, going to the Java console, you can actually turn off a set of policies that basically says, I don't want this set of users to change any of these settings. I just want them to be able to restore files. In fact, I don't want even them to go back in and download it. The only thing that they can do is restore it, 
and it restores it, it restores it to the original machine that it came from. It's not going to, so I can't go to any public computer, bring this up over here and hit the download button, bring it down here. So the whole bunch of uh, controls built in from a policy perspective in the back to prevent you from doing all of this over here. mobile phone platforms? Yeah, it's, so you can do all of iOS, you can do all the Android. Um, we have it available for BlackBerry tablet right now, um, <laughs> which is a... a, a uh, <laughs> I've met actually several people that, were, that we're loved their you, BlackBerry Hey, tablet. tell that to the Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> Canadians swear by BlackBerry. Um, and we have it for the Windows 8 as well. So you can okay. use the window. There's an app for the, I've seen a couple of them around here, Windows tablet. Yeah, but to be fair, they also have for BlackBerry. So don't feel bad. Chris, thanks. Okay, Chris? The most telling part of that was how surprised he looked. That's number eight in the Windows Store. So, um, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say this. This, I mean, this may look like I hope we are kind of going back in and connecting the dots over here because this is one of those things. It may look like everybody else has this in the portfolio. Everybody has a, you know, or many people have a laptop data protection app. Many people have an archiving app. Many people have a deduplication appliance. Many people have VM protection. Lot of different pieces out there. Correct. But, yeah. the, the point here is that hopefully you can kind of connect the dots over here and say, we build this engine over here that is capable of taking advantage, advantage of the best resources that's available in your enterprise. If you have very, if, if your snapshot engine is a very good data mover, we'll take advantage of that. We do not want to be the best data mover. We are a very efficient data mover, and we are a very efficient data engine. But if there is a better data mover in the storage itself, we'll take advantage of that. We will drive replication inside the storage array. If the storage array is not capable of doing that, we have a very, very elegant and very, very efficient way of capturing that from tier one storage, putting it into tier two storage without minimal product impact. The key here is I'm going to touch the data just once on the production source and touch it every time it changes, I'm going to collect a bunch of information about it and then use that information in the back. This is a great example. And this, this, we, we've shown this for laptop and I just, this, there's no reason you cannot do this for file servers. Right? You go in there, you collect, you do your incremental forever and one pass in the front end, combine your backup and deep archive retention policies right there, first time I collect it, apply all of these policies and run, the, run all of these rules in the back end on my dedupe engine using dash folds and dash copies and then kind of drive in all of that and then expose it up. Which goes back to the whole thing over there. Deduplication and data movement is not just about efficient storage production. It's about what can I do once I've collected the data and exposing it out and expose all the different use cases. And, because, and that's the uniqueness of this plat platform over here because it's been built organically. It's not piecemeal, no piecemeal built over here. The ability to take some of the benefits over here and apply it to a different context or to a different adjacent market or to, a, to you know, and there's, we talked about edge case over here. The same concept applies to uh, patch system, medical imaging system over here. We can take the same concept, one pass it into, into, the, into the back end, and then expose it through a content indexing search interface. Same thing for telcos and everything else over there. So that's, hopefully, if, if anything, the takeaway that, that this group takes away from here is, is everybody can check box these things off, right? Uh, but if you come back to having this one strat the strategic vision for your organization to say, I'm going to put this engine in here, and then I don't have to do it on day one, but over a period of time, I'm going to expose all of these additional capabilities to my consumers, and my consumers could be my department heads, or it could be if I'm an MSP service provider, <coughs> my, my uh, customers over here. I can expose off, and I start, uh, that's I can start adding value. This is where backup is no longer a cost center, it's actually a revenue driver. It's actually a value provider to your organization. So we want, if anything, we want everybody to come back and say, backup is no longer, just, it, you do not want to treat backup as a cost driver at all. It has to be something that provides value to organization. Otherwise, it's, 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 it's not worth it. Yeah. 